So the difference between structured programming and object-oriented programming is that structured programming is older and it's more top-down logic than nonlinear. For example, in object-oriented programming, you can have function calls and the logic can go all over the place instead of just going from top to bottom. And structured programming is more concerned with procedure, while object-oriented programming is more concerned with representing models or objects. And structured programming is closer to assembly language, therefore it's lower in abstraction than object-oriented programming. A data structure is some kind of method for storing and organizing data on a computer. Examples are classes, arrays, structs. It doesn't count as data itself, but a way of organizing data. A class is a kind of data structure that can hold both data and functions, and data of different data types, unlike an array. You can think of a class as a template for creating objects. The class itself isn't a real object, but the class can produce objects. So you can think of it as a cookie cutter creating cookies as an example. There can be one class, but that class could have many instantiations. Each object has its own individual identity. So a class is a template or a set of actions and attributes and an object is an instantiation of this template. So we can imagine that a class can be like a fruit and object can be a specific fruit. For example, apple and oranges are fruits. Both are objects of the class fruit and they have similar attributes because they're both from the same class. They also have the same action which is to cost something. First, create a fruit class. And don't forget the semicolon at the end because this isn't a function declaration, it's a data structure, just like an array. In C++, there are things called access specifiers. There's private, public, and protected. And all data members are private by default. So let's just make it public so it's available anywhere in the program for simplicity. So each member of fruit class will have the following attributes, price per pound and weight. Besides having attributes, members of a class can have actions or functions, methods. Basically, they're just functions. They can be declared inside the class or they can be declared outside the class, which is what we will do. Since we're declaring the function outside the class, we have to use the scope resolution operator, which is the double colons, to signify that it's a member of the fruit class. And the function will return the cost of the fruit based on the weight and that price per pound. So set up the main function. Apple and orange will be objects of the fruit class. We'll use cin and cout statements to allow the user to enter data about Apple. So you can enter the price per pound and the weight of apples. And likewise, we'll do the same for object orange. We enter data from the keyboard about orange. So the function of the fruit class will output the cost of each fruit. So in the console window, we can see this happen to make sure it works right. 